what you saw as roadblocks that are there in front of you. And if you could remove that, you're sure to crack the exam. As in your mindset, what were those roadblocks that came during your preparation? So the biggest roadblock was my attitude towards study techniques because uh, my father is a psychologist, so I have already, always been interested in social psychological studies. So what did you do differently in the second attempt that made you crack this first stage of the exam at school? So I tried to ensure that I have final sets of notes, or uh, notes as in the sense of keywords on every topic, which I could enable me to revise every subject in a day, like one subject in a day. Everyone, I welcome you all for another podcast of the series, Unlock the Officer Within You. My name is Sumant and I'll be your host for today. And today we have with us a very special case who has unlocked the officer within him. And today we have with us rank 167 of 2023 batch, Rishabh Dev with us. Hello Rishabh, thank you Hello. for coming into this session. Hello. So today we're going to have a conversation about how you unlock that officer within you right from the start of the journey till the end. Okay. So as a part of our discussion, we will be discussing upon certain angles of mindset of how Rishabh actually unlocked the officer within him, okay? So Rishabh, before we proceed with the podcast, can you please tell the audience a little bit about your background and where are you from? Uh, surely. So, hello, hello everyone. I am Rishabh Dev. I was born and brought up in Ranchi. I did my schooling from Delhi Public School, Ranchi. And then I completed my BLLB honors from National University of Juridical Sciences, Kolkata. And uh, then I started, I dived into, as you know, sir, we have discussed, we uh, dived into the UPSC preparation and since then I've been preparing for uh, like one and a half years and since like in 2023 I thankfully have cleared all the stages. I could not clear prelims if in the first attempt which was in June 2022. Mm -hmm. It was right after my graduation. So my final end semester exams ended in April and then I prepared with very little effort. And I scored a meager, as I told you that time, I scored a meager 35 in UPSC prelims. And uh, now it has, and, and also this increase, I think, was also in due in part to the personal mentorship and guidance provided by Sumat sir and uh, National IAS. Thank you. Thank you, Rishabh. So, Rishabh, you know, uh, just reflecting on the points that you mentioned here, you know, what was, uh, let's dive into what was your mindset when you started this journey? The first question that absolutely comes to my mind or for anyone's mind here is, you're from a law background, but you've taken up sociology as an optional. So for my first question is, in spite of the law background, how come you took sociology? So the question that comes, should a person from the background, from the academic background, should they take that itself as an optional or something different? What's your take on that, Rishabh? Uh, that depends on the person, I believe, because, uh, I was very confused between sociology and law. However, I have studied law for five years and I thought that sociology is a good way to learn about the society, about the things that are going on around us. It was also one of the subjects in my BA part of my law, integrated law course. And uh, I, I also realized that either as a civil servant or a practicing advocate, my work will revolve at the intersection of law and society. So it was a pretty good opportunity to learn new theories, new things. So it's a very practical decision that you made about what could come in the service and that's how you took up yes. optional as social. Okay. Perfect. So to begin with, uh, Rishabh, you know, let's reflect upon when you started the journey, what you saw as roadblocks that are there in front of you. And if you could remove that, you're sure to crack the exam. As in your mindset, what were those roadblocks that came during your preparation that to begin with? So the biggest... Uh, Roadblock was my attitude towards study techniques mm -hmm. because uh, my father is a psychologist so I have already always been interested in social psychological studies and I had I came across this book called Make It Stick Make which it stick. which said that uh, the traditional uh, learning techniques that we use like rereading, note making, highlighting, underlining, note these are all very inefficient study techniques. Mm -hmm. And then they gave some scientific techniques like active recall, spaced repetition, interleaving. And so it was very, but I realized that it is not something that is very prevalent in the UPSC uh, coaching sector because most of the people, most of the teachers, everyone is just going on rereading, highlighting, note making and not using effective evidence-based scientific study techniques. So the biggest roadblock was translating those scientific studies into the UPSC preparation and for which I 
later made a space repetition come revision tool come notebook come planner on a, a custom database in the productivity app called notion, notion. Okay. so mm -hmm. uh, so i think that was the biggest roadblock in trying to streamline my preparation both uh, in actuality and also both uh, like within my brain and outside of it wonderful so that uh, clearly shows that it's important to know how to learn before you actually start to learn rishabh mm -hmm. wonderful congratulations for knowing that before so that you are able to translate it to success very good rishabh so to begin with the first thing that is involved is the prelim stage so prelims is said to be one of the most competitive segments of the upsc exam and in your first attempt you missed it so what did you do differently in the second attempt that made you crack this first stage of the exam that is prelims Could sir in my first attempt i had firstly come to the exam like with uh, one one and a half months of preparation and i had already like qualified quite a few competitive exams in my school and later careers like i have been an ntsc scholar then i qualified jee mean i may sorry jee i qualified jee mean i qualified neat and then i qualified clat and then finally went to law school so i i had always thought that i have a good competence in cracking objective type exams so even one one and a half months preparation will do however it was a <laughs> very harsh <laughs> reality and it brought me back to the earth and so then i decided i tried to plan my uh, preparation backwards from the prelims in the sense that i tried to cover i tried to ensure that i have final sets of notes or uh, notes as in the sense of keywords on every topic which i could enable me to revise every subject in a day like one subject in a day so that i could revise every single subject everything that i had studied in this past one one and a half years just the week before the prelims so i could revise history culture in one day politics polity in one day economy in one day and that enabled that i thought that that helped me in two ways firstly it enabled, it gave me a lot of confidence because i had revised everything that i had studied in the past week and secondly if there was a difficult question which i could not solve even after revising everything in the past week then i realized that this is a difficult question that even after studying this much i could not uh, solve it so that i would change my risk appetite appropriately in such a question wonderful so to just break down what rishab mentioned it's about he first made the notes and then he connected it to the previous year questions to check if the notes are valid enough and also i also included the uh, i also included notes on the questions that have been asked by upsc since 1979 when the prelims started and all the options because i realized like you had said countless times yes. right that today's option becomes tomorrow's question today's question becomes tomorrow's statement Mm. and and uh, you had shown me a couple of examples in history that the questions of 1980s are directly repeated yes so based on your uh, guidance i then tried to streamline my preparation very glad rishab appreciate that see i always tell that mentors are like tools so you need to use the tools to leverage so the guidance is provided from us and i'm very glad rishab that you grabbed it and utilized it very glad of that So the next stage comes when it comes to I always say that UPSC preparation is not difficult it is different if you don't get the difference it becomes very difficult so in this regard rishab the difference as we generally communicate is about this exam syllabus revolves around current affairs so how did you consolidate the current affairs when it comes to this exam and how do you define current affairs after your preparation of this exam according to you so current affairs i think how i see them now are the contemporary and dynamic uh, events going on in whichever subject that we are studying however this is not to mistake it with another subject like many students what do they do many aspirants they try to treat current affairs as a separate subject but i did not do that i tried to include it within the subjects that i was learning so what i used to do i had taken the uh, subscription of the hindu and indian express e papers i used to skim through them uh, with my morning cup of tea every day and uh, later on i would uh, at the end of the month i would like consolidate uh, all of the notes from monthly magazines 
and also if some uh, because my optional was sociology and my background was law so if there was a editorial or an explained subject uh, uh, topic on law or society then i would take notes of them and add it into my main notes so that i did not have a separate notebook of current affairs but i had included all the current affairs that i read in my master notebook so that I only I only try to have one uh, source of revision for every subject. Perfect. So that's a very important point everyone needs to notice here is to consolidate everything at one place. And when you have everything at one place, your revision becomes better and your retention becomes better. Wonderful, Rishabh. So coming to the note making part, which you mentioned right now, further now that the knowledge is ready. So the next comes the skills, as we always discussed. UPSC is about 30% knowledge, 70% skill, practice and presentation. So according to you, Rishab, from the notes you have made, when it comes to translating it to performance and prelims, what do you think is the skill that one needs to develop? And what was your reflection on the skills that were needed for you to crack, that made you crack the prelims in the second attempt? According to uh, Sir, I think this is a very uh, broad answer because uh, the nature of the so the prelims, uh, what happens is, I don't think prelims, especially GS, is that much of a factor of practice as it is of peripheral knowledge. In the sense that there are many questions that you can answer because of the accumulated knowledge that you have over the years. But this is not an aptitude based exam like banking or CAT that if you practice, 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 if you do a lot of tests, then you will automatically score high. That does not happen. For example, I can uh, give you a couple of examples. So there was this question last year prelims on uh, wiggle dance of honeybee. Yes. Mm. And uh, if you remember, we had those classmate notebooks in school where there was a did you know column at the end. Yes. So I had remembered in uh, seven, class standard 7th or 8th, I had a notebook which said that honeybees dance in an 8 shape yes. when they have to signal for food. Yes. So that helped me to uh, answer this question. Similarly, the question on orangutan fishing and trying uh, using arrows and scraping the barks of trees that I had seen in that Richard uh, Attenborough documentary on docu series on Netflix. Yes. So the thing with prelims is that you have to be aware of what is going on. Like I can give another example. In 2021, I believe there was a question on where is triclosan used in. And it was during lockdown and had anyone seen the ingredients of a hand sanitizer or a hand wash, then we would have seen triclosan over there. So it is about being, I think the skill is translating your knowledge into an application. Like we have knowledge and we are, but we have application. For example, we know that benzene is one of the air, air pollutants, but then UPSC asks, which of the following things release? benzene when they are burned. Yes. So that is application. Perfect. So as Rishabh rightly mentioned, it's about opening your mind to things around you. So as we discuss in this book, Unlock the Officer Within, Rishabh rightly mentions that UPSC is not just in the books you read. It's in everything that you see around. It's in the books you read, the movies you watch and the places you visit. So the skill as Rishabh mentioned, if I have to put it in my words, it's about being aware about things around you and applying the things that you have learned or the knowledge into application. And Very well. Just add, add to that, sir. How can we acquire that skill? We can only acquire that skill by memorizing, by making notes and by understanding, analyzing the previous year questions. Perfect. Absolutely. So that is with respect to the prelims. Now, I want to ask you one more thing, you know, as the prelims is coming by Rishabh, how did you revise when it comes to the notes that you have made? When it comes to revision, was it just reading the notes that you have written or was there any different methods you followed for revision? Could you throw some light on that? Uh, sir, so as I told in that book, I read that uh, when we read something to revise again, then we, our brain remembers that we have seen this yes. passage, mm. but it thinks that we have remembered this passage. Yes. So our brain then mistakes recognition for recollection. and. So then our brain uh, mistaken refer, uh, then our brain mistaken recognition for recollection. However, 
I tried to do active recall. That is, I used to take a sheet of paper and uh, try to scribble whatever. When I that sat down to revise a topic, I took a uh, sheet of paper and scribbled whatever I remembered about that topic. Then I went to my, back to my notes and tried to check. Because what happens that when we are actively trying to recall whatever that piece of information is, then the neural connections that are built with respect to that memory in our brain, they get stronger with every single revision. And it becomes very easy to recollect that. Otherwise, if you just keep on reading and if you just keep on highlighting, then what happens that in the exam, you picture that whatever information it is that you are seeking, it was there in that page number, in that paragraph, below that picture, but you cannot recollect what was the exact information. Perfect. Absolutely. So, Rishabh rightly mentioned what we call as the brainstorming technique that we have discussed in this book, where it's about not just reading the same book again and again, rather it is about testing your recall muscle by putting down the concepts and recalling it. Wonderfully said, Rishabh. I'm very glad that you applied what we taught. Wonderful. So, in this regard, coming to the next stage of the exam, when it comes to mains, you know, you're approximately writing around three and a half thousand words in three hours. That's around 25 words per minute. You practically can't just recall what's there in your book and write it in the exam. So what do you think is the skill that is needed for mains according to you, Rishabh? And how was your experience of writing mains? Uh, can you please share that uh, yes. perspective? So again, the skill that was that is required in mains is to translate whatever that it is that you know about what the question and to show to the examiner on paper that you know this much about that question because it does not matter if you have a lot of knowledge inside of your mind as long as if you don't put it on the paper i know umpteen aspirants who know more than me who are more knowledgeable than me who have studied more than me revised more than me however they when they write answers they they if even if they know they are unable to put in even 10 percent of what they know of a topic because they get caught up in the question or whatever it is that they write so I had made it, like you had said, I had made it a point to uh, ensure that whatever it is, I have to show that the maximum amount of knowledge that I have, like an input on whatever the topic is, should match the output reflected in the answer sheet. And that I did uh, by uh, focusing again, I developed the skill like you always keep on saying in your guidance sessions that PYQs, PYQs, PYQs. So I did that only. In, in mains also, I focused on the PYQs before uh, giving any tests, uh, tests. And I realized that in of the 20 questions that are asked, there are 10 questions which everyone knows the answers to. There are six questions that you can answer if you have studied in depth. depth. But there are four questions in every paper that no one has ever thought could be asked. Like the question on Purvaya this time, or the question on fjords in GS1. So these are the ones no one has found. So, as you had told in your session, uh, what I did was I prepared introduction and uh, conclusion templates for the commonly asked themes. Mm -hmm. So that I could save time in those 10 questions because I had my introductions and conclusions ready. And that would enable me to have more time to solve the four bouncer questions. For example, if there was a question on water in either GS1, GS2 or GS3, my introduction was the same. That Niti Aayog says that India has 18% of the world population, but only 4% of the water resources. You can take this introduction to whichever direction you want. You can take it to water management, water crisis, water pollution, anywhere. So I had made these kinds of templates and uh, based on that, I thought I think that I could make up uh, the time and solve all the answers in time. And also, I think what another practical thing that I did was before the uh, uh, means I did a simulation. In the sense that I uh, wrote essay on the fr two essays on the Friday before the mains, then GS1, GS2 on the Saturday before the mains, and GS3, GS4 on the Sunday before the mains. Okay. And I realized while writing GS4 that I knew all the answers, but because I had I was tired after writing so much in the past two days, mm -hmm. that my hands were not working. My hands were not moving, and this was like one week, five days before the mains. Okay. So I started panicking. At however, I took. So, and I realized after talking to my parents that I and some other cousins and all who had given the exam before that I should pop painkillers. So I used, used to pop painkillers before every paper mm -hmm. so that I could not feel the numbness and the tiredness in my hand. And that I think also helped me to get through the exam. Wonderful. Absolutely. So here when giving more clarity to the 
audience here. No, now, as we discussed that previous year questions give us the direction. But end of the day, in spite of the previous year questions, here it is about a matter of creative expression or a written expression angle of it. Many of the students who come from the engineering background, Rishabh, you're from a law background, and uh, obviously you will have that kind of a context of writing. Many of them who come from an engineering background or a medical background lack this expression of writing. Could you throw a little light on how you built that expression? Was it natural to you or you did any exercises to build that expression of writing? Sir, I think uh, I've always been very involved in creative writings in school. So I had, a, I think, like, I think that I have a way with the English language, but the, those who read my answers may dis disagree. But I thought that there are some certain kinds of questions that are often repeated and you could have frameworks for those kinds of answers. Or questions like there is a question on say poverty and unemployment the linkages between the two so you can have a generic mind map which shows that poverty the vicious cycle of poverty and how unemployment is linked to it or how lack of skill is linked to it or anything that is asked and if they ask the question then you will just have to simply paste it in your answer sheet similarly if there is a question on emotional intelligence then i always had that so daniel goldman in his book gives five components of uh, emotional intelligence. So in every answer of emotional intelligence, I used to draw hex, uh, pentagons and uh, label all the, uh, the uh, components. Yes. So to consolidate Rishabh's answers, uh, I would like to tell you all that you should build the frameworks ready as per the topics and the concepts so that you have something ready to actually use it. Wonderful. Absolutely. So Rishabh, now that we understood about the mains aspect of it, before we go to the interview, I see a pattern of your answers that you have made it a habit as a part of your preparation. Could you please throw a little light about your routines of the day and the habits you had during this preparation that made you reflect this into success of this exam? So the biggest habit that I uh, developed was not reading in long sessions, not studying in long sessions. So uh, I had studied in a couple of research papers that our brains retention and attention yes. both dips massively crashes after like 30 minutes or 40 minutes of undivided attention therefore i made it a point so there's this technique called pomodoro technique yes, we discussed that. it yeah. says yes so it says that you should sit in short sessions then take short breaks and after a few sessions you take a longer break yes. so as you had said in 25 5 voila repetition we yes. used i used to do in the beginning but over time, because my retention, attention, focus, everything increased as I started studying more and more. By the time the prelims were near, I could increase that focused sessions to one and a half hours. So I would do one and a half hours, eight sessions of one and a half hours. And uh, I would pepper them, I would spread them throughout the day. And I would do whatever daily uh, chores or whatever I had or go to if I had to go to the gym then I would plan it accordingly so that I could fit my one and a half eight hours eight sessions into them and uh, so this was one thing that I took and also before the prelims when we had that call you said uh, told me that uh, I also have to focus on uh, the anxiety that I was facing at that time because it, it is very anxiety ridden because you think that I have spent so much time so much effort after before after this exam and if the prelims are a little uh, you know not in my favor unfavorable then two years of effort is wasted the year that has gone by and the year that is yet to come so to deal with that I had also started as you had said that start meditating or try to exercise with, to release good hormones yes. and to focus on your uh, to deal with your anxiety so I started doing that. I started meditating in the morning, doing some positive affirmations and that helped me in handling myself. And further, another thing that I used is athletes use a lot of techniques called visualization. Yes. So what they do is before the match, they try to visualize that I'm going to go onto the pitch. I'm going to take my stance. There will be so much crowd over there. They'll be chanting my name. Then the, this ball will come. I'll do that. So I used to think before one month before the prelims and I would uh, urge all the aspirants to do this whenever you are free just think that I am going to the exam hall I'm in my car I'm reading I'm re revising whatever notes I have made or, or whatever then I'm going I'm sitting on the table I'm opening the OMR sheet I'm trying to try to uh, visualize this so that what happens is that your brain 
becomes used to this anxiety because you will be in anxiety that time for without any doubt but your brain will become used to that anxiety and how meditation helped that when the uh, paper came in 2023 i was my mind had been blown because how you everyone knows how the paper was last time in prelims so then i sh shut down the paper and i meditated for like 5 minutes i took deep, deep breaths i tried to focus myself calm myself down and then i realized that if this after studying so much if this paper is difficult for me then it is difficult for everyone else and because i had calmed myself down so i could not make any silly mistakes in the first 10 20 questions which i would have done had i started uh, answering the uh, questions right at when i got them in the mode of anxiety in the state of anxiety that i was in wonderful so i hope all of you understood that there's a lot behind just the subject knowledge it is about the skill set that is involved to consolidate what rishab mentioned i want all of you to go to the google store and download the app of pomodoro to increase your focus by 60% just by following what's in the app followed by the visualization and meditation to improve your presence of mind and with respect to your writing practice with all of these techniques in the background that will help you ace it because like uh, in your book also you say that an aspirant ne needs to have an athlete's mindset because say for example michael phelps or usain bolt or even neeraj chopra they work hard for 4 years just for 10 minutes or 1 uh, 10 seconds or 1 minute of glory yes and we also work so hard for a year just for those 2 hours so you have to have some anxiety because if you don't have anxiety then you for elite level performance because if you don't have anxiety that means you don't care but that anxiety should not be such that it cripples your performance thank you perfectly said rishab i'm very glad that you utilized our tools and techniques in a very effective way and unlock the officer that was already within you thank, thank you. you so much for giving your time here thank and you. i hope your advice and tips really helped a lot of students so stay tuned for our further episode of the podcast unlock the officer within you and always remember one thing that your life is determined by the questions you ask if you ask yourself a question like will i clear this exam or not your mind will always tell you won't but change the question and ask yourself what should i do to become a topper next year So choose your questions to choose your future. Thank you.